the Rikishi Fatu Off the Top Podcast. Let's go. Rikishi Fatu, all y'all ready? We the ones. It's 2024. Keep it locked on the Rikishi Fatu Podcast. Off the top. We gon' talk about everything. Everything wrestling, everything hip hop. Keep it locked. It's time to smarten up. All right, welcome to another episode of Verkisi Off the Top Podcast. It's another night here in Los Angeles, California, out here in Van Nuys. But first, before we start the show, I'd like to send a big shout out to my sponsors, Knox Pro Entertainment and Academy. Anything that you want to learn about professional wrestling, be it run a show or even learn how to be a pro wrestler, make sure you check out Knox Pro. That's K N O K X. PRO.com. So I want to introduce my man here. You know, we knocked it out the park the last episode, and if you didn't check it out, you best better check it out because it's time to smarten your ass up. And I'd like to introduce my new co-host, my man, TMD, Joey Gaten. What's going on, Mickey? What's the word, young blood? Oh, man, you know, just grinding, just grinding. I know, man. So what's been happening with you this week? Man, you know, just coming back from Berkeley. I worked at a Oasis Pro, mm-hmm. uh, working over out there with Journey, your nephew. Yeah, like uh, big shout out to Journey. Yes, sir, man. They got something nice going out out there in Berkeley, you know? Man, how does how does that show go up there? Like, what was what, what it in, like, a, a beer a distillery place? It's in a brewery. It's at a the brewery. brewery. It's like once a month. Oh, my goodness. They have a lot of Samoans up there in the brewery? They do, because they know there's beer there. So, yeah, absolutely. They got a nice long line every every show. Um, yeah, but it's, you know, it's a really cool vibe. It's there in Berkeley. It's at the Gilman Brewery. Yeah. And um, it's really good wrestling. And your your nephew, he's done, he, they, they do really, Jacob, too, they do really good work over there. Good, good. And how's the fans receiving that? The show. This was the pack. This was the pack. This last show they did was the nice. most. It was sold out. Mm. They, were, they were denying people at the door. So that tells you right there. In a year's time, they've built to a, a point now where their shows are selling out. And uh, how's the wrestlers up there? Like in an in, in independent uh, circuit up that way? What the Oasis? Re- really good competition. Uh, a lot, a lot of stars in the making are coming through Oasis Pro. You're getting people like from AEW coming through. Mm. Um, you got people from uh, various promotions around in that area. Like all like top dogs are coming. Uh, people are stopping uh, through Oasis. The Bay Area has got a lot of companies. Yes. I, I realize that. It seems to me like the Bay Area has been growing a lot, you know, with a lot of companies from uh, Kirk White, you know, rest in peace, rest in Kirk, peace. Reed, uh, Kirk White, and uh, out there in San Jose, you know, I see a lot of lucha companies starting to open up. It's a good thing that, you know, for the for the independent wrestlers, you know, they get a lot of places where they can be able to go uh, perfect their craft, you know. You're not going to make a lot of money. Right. But at least uh, you, you're able to get in front of a crowd to be able to test your skills. You know, how's that? How's that been going with you? Good, good. good. As a matter of fact, we just had a triple shot. Uh, the Rock and Road Express being Hillbilly. Ah. We just had a triple shot at the barrier at the Bay Area. So like you just mentioned, there is a lot of companies uh, going on right now, which is good for the people like ourselves uh, with getting work. You can uh, come in on a Friday night, work Friday, work Saturday, work Sunday and then come back home for the grind. You, um, you know, you you know, with independent wrestling nowadays, unlike our days, man, there was not too much, you know, and it seems like there's so many companies that are opening up throughout the country and overseas as well in Europe, you know, and it gives it makes me happy that, you know, it gives a lot of uh, kids and in, uh, independent kids out there uh, just to be able to have a place to be able to go and, you know, continue to build their brand. And most to, to understand and, you know, the perfect their skills as far as, uh, you know, in different different shows. Because in different, you know, different arenas, you know this, where you go, the spots that you done last night, you drove four hours someplace else to Nevada, and that same spot might not even work over the crowd. And now you're kind of like... You know, you're you're dumbfounded. Like, oh man, you start to panic. Like, what's wrong? This spot worked last night, bro. How do you adapt to from that? Man, you know, you just gotta stick to uh, what you know and what yeah. you do best. 
and, and adapt. Is that what you learned? Yeah, yes. Where where'd you learn that? Knox Pro. Come on now. <laughs> Harvard. The Harvard. Uh, I'm sorry. The yeah. Georgetown. Uh, right. Of uh, uh, professional wrestling. Um. Yeah. Uh, you just stick to what you know and what you do best. And um, sometimes you hit. Sometimes you miss. And um, mm. you really gotta uh, be in tune with with what the. Some crowds, Keish, I've seen some shows where the, the the crowd will come unglued to a shoulder tackle. Mm, yeah, you know, so you you know, uh, like you say, you know, what kind of match you're gonna have uh, when and they're just popping off the of shoulder tackles. Uh, at the end of the day, you know, and the reason why I'm asking you Lucy, these questions, I'm hoping you say the correct thing that you've learned from us. Yes, sir. Yeah, and you know, I, I I know that you know the answer, but. These are for the students or the kids around the world that's ha that hasn't had a chance uh, to be able to be trained up underneath professionals. And so it really helps that we have this type of conversation when, you know, when the, the teacher is asking the student, because I want to see what type of answer that you're going to give me. And so, you know, I can see that, you know, we talk about spots of different crowds, you know, sometimes like... We we teach here that you got to conserve your body. Like if I don't need, if you're hearing that, that uh, you know, 737 Boeing 30, 737 is flying over Knoxville on the tank. We're out here in Van Nuys, right. California by the airport. But but yeah, it, it, so, you know, the, the uh, what was that? Yeah, Longevity. Longevity, okay. Which is something you, you've taught, taught for a long time and, I'm not going to give away all his secrets. That's why you got to come to Knox Pro and, and learn a lot of stuff. But you've talked about longevity uh, since uh, I, I was there. And, and I, I got to tell you, Keish, one thing I witnessed with my own eyes was I mentioned how, how some crowds will pop to a shoulder tackle. Uh, me and Hillbilly were wrestling in Fresno. And the match before us, the guy literally did a backdrop onto a, 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 a ladder and, and, and um, almost killed himself. And guess what? Why? Why? Nobody responded. There wasn't no a, a single pop. We were the next match, and I did the freaking Pee Wee Herman dance, and the place came unglued. Mm. And and somebody came up to me. It was um, uh, somebody from the WWE. And he was watching the match, yep. and he said, "That's uh, when you just did a Pee Wee Herman dance. They came unglued. That guy almost killed himself to no pop, and uh, he's probably done after that. And uh, with with <laughs> he killed himself for for nothing. Basically, is what I'm I'm trying to get at. And uh, you need longevity, right?" I mean, yeah, so, you know, obviously that kid didn't have no knowledge about, you know, what it is to be in there. You know, certain things that you have a choice to do or not to do. There's there's different arenas where you can pull out. For something like that, hell, it'd have to be a pay-per-view for me. If I'm going to put my body through a through the ladder, did he think the ladder was going to lose? It didn't even budge. That's the thing. That's the... That's the well, okay, this, this is my advice to you kids out there in Independent. Perfect your craft, learn longevity, learn uh, psychology in the ring, and just learn how to protect yourself and the other wrestler. So let's enough about the independent, Joey. What's happening? What is the hot news that's going out there uh, as far as professional wrestling? Well, you know, we're coming off the Royal Rumble, and, you know, we're coming oh. off a really uh, history uh, uh Changing week last week with uh, the Netflix sale going down on a Wednesday, mm. the all the news that came with Vince McMahon on on the uh, Thursday, Friday he resigned, which means there was no McMahon members in the WWE working right now. So that's the first time in history. The Royal Rumble was over the weekend, and we all saw it. Did, did, did you say five what billion? Five billion dollars. That's how much the deal's worth over over ten years of streaming. And wow. guess, get get this, no commercials. That's a good chunk of change. Yes, sir. And the matches won't have commercials. So that's another uh, first time right there, uh, mm. you know. So um, huge deal, huge week for pro wrestling. The Royal Rumble uh, with the 2024 winner, um, Cody Rhodes. Wait. Well, you know what? I, I only watched a little bit. I kind of watched the beginning part of it. Of course, uh, you know, I, I, I tweeted this out uh, before. Uh, I think it was a couple of days ago. You know, I was sitting home and... Uh, the boys didn't give me heads up what time they were coming on. And to be able to see my my sons open up the Royal Rumble, you know, it was like a historical moment for me. You know, and it's another historical uh, historical moment added. You know, last time it was uh, another uh, moment for our family. It was when I bust a move in Madison Square Garden. And then, you know, 2024, here I have my two boys opening up. 
You know, so big shout out to my sons. Big shout out to to Jay. I think he went almost an hour out there. Wow. You know, and I, you know, I would have, uh, you know, I watched the, the ending of the Royal Rumble. And they came down to, what was it, CM Punk? CM Punk and Cody And Rose. Cody. And, you know, uh, before I ask you what, what your pick would have been, you know, for sure I thought that, you know, they were going to give it to CM Punk. You know, CM Punk just had a, a hell of a uh, comeback in, into the WWE universe. I mean, we all heard it and seen it around the world how the WWE universe embraced this guy coming back, you know, and it almost kind of sound bigger than when, you know, for me, it sounded bigger when Cody first came back. And so from a business standpoint, you know, I thought, okay, we seen Cody and Roman, you know, what was it, last year? And for sure, I thought it was going to go, okay, they got to go this way with CM Punk and Roman. But for whatever reason happened, yeah, it took a turn on, uh, you know, on uh, CM Punk and they happened to go with Cody. So um, what was it that that's out there? I hear that uh, uh, CM Punk got injured. Um, the, the details of his injury aren't uh, super clear right now, whether it's a, a tear or, or a break. But it looks like his WrestleMania match is in jeopardy now. OK. And what I, I'm gonna, I'm, let's, let's do a little I'm gonna, I'm gonna test your skills and your knowledge of wrestling Joey yes sir okay so let's let's just say I come to you as a fan I said we're not gonna go with you with for Wrestlemania so what is it that we can do to you or you suggest that we do that we can kind of uh, like go another route without without hurting your brand right? Right. You, you, I mean, well, uh, right. yes, sir. I, I, you kind of say like, we're, you know, I'm, I'm just taking for those that. Well, it's kind of what happened with Stone Cold when he got injured. So to keep, to keep him on camera, they, may, they appointed him what the general manager. So maybe in that role or that sense, it depends on the injury. Like if it's so bad that you can't step foot in the ring, well, then mm. that means you're going to have to do vignettes. You're going to have to announce. You're going to have to do appearances. I'd be an ambassador. Like uh, I think that's something along the lines that I, I would do. Uh, well, let, let me ask do, do you believe that? Uh, do we actually believe that CM Punk tore his bicep? Oh, man. I'm gonna, I mean, you've been saying all this time when you came back that I've come back the headline main event, WrestleMania, and then that doesn't happen. So this is what I think. I, you know, I, I'm a CM Punk guy. I've always liked CM Punk. <laughs> That's why I'm and, asking you these. And, and, and you know what? I, I really thought that was really ballsy of him to go to the UFC. Mm -hmm. uh, and um, anyone who's, I mean, we saw what happened with him in the UFC, okay? And he got a lot of flack for that. But you know what? I always saw the point, well, this guy signed the dotted line, and that got my respect enough that he even showed up to fight in the UFC. He's had a roller coaster of year when he went to uh, AEW, and now that he's come back, um, I'm going to say I believe he's legitimately injured because why would he jeopardize uh, his – he's got a lot to prove right now. He really does because of everything that went down in AEW. Uh, I mean, first of all, when he showed up, when he debuted at AEW, I popped big time. Uh, I love the fact that he comes out to a licensed song in living color, cult of personality. Like, that is awesome because most wrestlers come out with pre-made music. And, mm. and um, that music set him uh, aside a long time ago for me. I really don't think that he would jeopardize this. The, he's getting older now. He, like, he's got the gray like me. You know, we're rocking the grays. I don't think he would jeopardize a quiche. <laughs> I think you know, right. If you guys can only see Joey explaining this. Boy, I see you. You really love seeing Punk. I, I do. I can I just mean, see about the passion. I, you're, like, you don't want to believe. I mean, you know. You don't you want know, to believe he, us. He's not yeah, Bret Hart status. Him. He's not my Bret Hart status. But I, I do like seeing Punk a, a lot. I do like him a lot. Well, yeah, he's great. I, I think, you know. Know what I think uh, CM Punk has one of the best minds in professional wrestling, and here's why I tell you why is because this cat here is a marketing genius. He learned and he utilized his strongest thing to CM Punk is his mouthpiece. This guy here, when he spits whatever he comes out of his mouth, 
He knows how to market himself. He knows how to get everything like stirred up to bring entrance towards his brand, the CM Punk brand. And for him, when we found out he was going to UFC, I, obviously, come off. Everybody, when, you know, UFC don't respect wrestlers. I'm going to say that because, you know, they look at us like, you know, we're entertainment. We, you know, all our stuff is whatever, right? We don't, we don't really get out there and do it. But there's certain things that UFC guys don't know that the boys, we can shoot when we want to shoot. And so I don't know about the fighting background skills of CM Punk from back in the day when he was out there on Independence. I never heard anything about a fight with CM Punk got into. But when he moved over and signed the dotted line for UFC, the only real thing to me about that was the bag. And for that, CM Punk is like, he's one of my guys at the top list as far as being a smart, smart uh, marketing branding type of guy for himself, you know? So, but uh, yeah, so, uh, you know, I, I think that, uh, you know, uh, with Cody Rhodes and Roman, you know, who, who, who do you think that? And then I'll tell you what my thoughts would be. Well, you know, everyone's wanting Cody Rhodes to finish the story. You know, it's the story versus, uh, I mean, it could be possibly be the story versus the bloodline. Uh, you know, man, it's Roman's time. I think Roman, he's been on top for years now with the head of the table uh, angle. Uh you know, every, I mean, it's a really, this is, it's, it's an awesome, it's an awesome uh, angle, no matter which way you look at it and uh, taking out um, CM Punk. I'm going to have to go, I'm going to have to go with, uh, I'd, I'd really like to see Roman because of the time he's put in from um, NXT when he came to the main roster, did the shield stuff, everyone went their own ways. They weren't with him for a long time. There was that one time where The Rock had to come into the ring so that he can get the rub off of Dwayne that one time. And then they were booing him in the ring with The Rock. Uh, they, you know, that even The Rock's rub couldn't wasn't enough. They were so against him. But then over time with the work he put in the ring, he got over. And now he's the biggest thing in wrestling for the last few years years so uh, i'd really like to see roman uh uh re retain his title at wrestlemania okay <clears throat> so let me give you my my two cents on this here for me i would love to see cody sir finally finish the, the story right but when you look from a business standpoint do we take it to just thinking about the one person or do we think about what's going to continue to put asses in seats? Because right now it's really, really hard to beat Roman Reigns. And I'm not just saying that because he's, you know, part of the bloodline. Right, right. Oh, no, I'm lying. I am saying that. Right? Because you can't, you know, we always said the asses in seats. I don't hate. If there's another person that can step in Roman's, uh, Roman's shoes and put asses in seats if not like him or more, and you can rest assured, you know, WWE or TKO now is going to be able to give that person that opportunity. Now, what I didn't see and what I probably what probably should have happened. The only way something like this will probably happen uh, with Cody, if in case they got to have the Rock Roman first. They have to have that. And I can see that. And then possibly, you know, Roman would probably take a back seat to Rock. Bloodline lays down for the bloodline. And then you want to push Cody to the next level? In comes Cody versus The Rock for WrestleMania. That will complete the story. Who better? I mean, Roman's a GOAT. By all means, he's breaking broken records already. Viewers, you know, ticket sales, you name it. But when you talk about The Rock, come on. Is there a better ending? Is there a better ending to the story than that? I couldn't think of one. You wow. Know. Rikishi Fatu, off the top. We coming right back.
right, ladies and gentlemen, we are back with more Off the Top with Rikishi Fatu and TMD. Really quick, uh, Kishi, I wanted to touch uh, uh, back on a few things that we were talking about CM Punk in the UFC. Yeah. Now, a while back, uh, a few weeks ago, there was a clip uh, online of you and CM Punk running into each other backstage, and it looked very genuine and and uh, warm, uh, warming um, uh, interaction between you two. Do you guys have a personal relationship? Uh, maybe you could touch on that a little bit. Oh yeah, well, I've always liked uh, CM Punk. Um, you know, I've I've ran into him every now and then on the independent circuit and so forth, and. Uh, and so to be able to see him, I, I actually came to Los Angeles um, to visit my boys. And Solo and the twins were there. And so, you know, uh, as I was coming through the back, of course, you know, we've seen a video where he just so happened to come out to, to the black curtain. What timing, right? Right. And then, you know, it, this first time I seen him in a minute, you know, and I was just happy. I, I told him, you know, welcome back and uh, welcome back home. Right. You know, and then we we just start chopping it up about, you know, I think he was on, uh, you know, uh, somewhat of the uh, next to next to the last match or something like that. But so we got a chance to just sit there, drink some coffee and chop it up and just told him, you know, welcome back, man. This is where you belong. You know, and I was just so happy to see him back home. Yes, sir. As a fan, it, it does uh, it is awesome to see him back in the WWE because we thought that would never happen ever again. So it, it is good to see him back. You know, we always say in this business, never say never, yes, especially sir. with the WWE. And like I said, you know, I'm sure they wouldn't have brought him back if, you know, negotiations didn't go right. And, you know, hey, you know, uh, everything's timing. You know, seeing Punk to be able to come back during this time was just the perfect time. You know, and, and again, you know, I wish that... uh you know, he, uh, you know, I wish him well. You know, he is up there a little bit on age now, uh, you know, going up against a lot of these youngsters that are in the WWE and so forth. And, you know, I just, uh, you know, advise and, and, you know, let them know that we, the OGs, we out here rooting for him. So, yes, sir. Go yes, see him, Punk. Um, and then one more thing about the UFC before we move on. Um, if the UFC existed back in the 80s, let's talk about just the 80s because we can we could talk past, present and future. But let's focus on the 80s. Um, if UFC was back around in, in, in those days, who do you think that in the WWE that was around in that time would have done well if they transitioned over to ultimate fighting? Hmm. Wow, that's a tough one. But, uh, you know, we talk and shoot wrestlers like, you know, I'd have to go with, we all know Ming is one of the toughest, you know, dudes on, on the whole roster in the wrestling world, period. And then I, I'd have to go with my uncle, Sika. Uh, he's just, uh, you know, we're not talking wrestler. We're talking about, I, yeah, we're I, talking personally, about yes. I personally know these guys here and been raised up underneath them. And I've seen what they can do. I'd have to go number three would be Alpha. Uncle Alpha, you know, I would have to say number four, I'd have to go Barbarian. Wow. Yeah, these are all island boys. Man. Yeah, right. Um, Jimmy, Uncle Jimmy Superfly Snooker. He, I mean, when he used to talk like that, brother, you know, if you had me join the UFC, you know, I probably would have been the first one to jump off the top of the cage, brother. <laughs> And so, yeah, I'd say Jimmy Snooker would be Uncle Jimmy. And, you know, this is probably going to be a uh, surprise to uh, some of y'all that don't really know this man, but I've, I've graced the locker room with him during the days with my uncle. Uncles, I'd have to say uh, Stan Hansen. Wow, Stan Hansen. <laughs> he was one tough SOB, dude. Wow. That country man was just, um, he was just a bull. Bruiser Brody. Ooh, yeah, yeah. Have you ever taken a lariat from Stan Hansen? Yes, sir. It felt <laughs> that's where I knew where JBL <laughs> JBL <laughs> gave me a close. I said, "Damn, you hit me like Stan Hansen." <laughs> <laughs> and so I, I'd have to say, uh, you know, Stan Hansen, uh, Bruiser Brody, and uh, let me see the, the Steiner brothers, both of them. Wow, they could have done real good in in the UFC. And then last, and uh, I would probably say, I would have to go Kurt Angle. Right, yeah. You know, I think Kurt, you know, because, you know, 
we all know his background, and that that's kind of like right up his alley. So that had to be my pick. I'm sure there's a lot of other, you know, younger cats that are out there, but I just can only remember these cats that I was around during the locker room days and and so forth. So it's a hell of a list of tough guys right there. Um, yeah. So you guys that you know, you guys that are in the business now, shit, you guys got a lot more opportunities now. So perfect your craft in professional wrestling. When it's time for you to jump on over to, you know, to UFC, hey, Brock Lesnar and uh, CM Punk open that door, right? And we all know once they promote, see a UFC fighter versus a, a wrestler, it automatically put asses in seats. Right, right. But it's got to be the right name of wrestler to go up against the right name of UFC. Yes, absolutely. Right? It's all about the Benjamins. All about the paper. That's it. Ain't nothing real about it but the bag. Cash rules everything around me. Hey, hey, hey. <laughs> you know, speak, speaking of Wu-Tang, uh, I was speaking with you earlier, and you just, yeah. I, I'm, I was, I, I marked out a little bit that you're a fan of the Wu-Tang Clan. Um, everybody knows, that knows you knows you love hip-hop. Yeah. You know, and um, speak, it's a perfect time uh, to transition a little bit. Um, I love the the theme song of the podcast, and, and and everyone knows that you're influenced a lot heavily by hip hop. And if you listen to the theme of music, I mean that's uh, OG material. You didn't yeah. you didn't sam you know you didn't buy like some uh, cheap song off YouTube. You actually got it custom made for the show, and, and, and you can tell that it's influenced by uh, hip hop heavily. How did you get that song written? Well, it was actually from my producer here, uh, Frank Ward, and uh, my host Mike. Um, they the one that kind of produced the song. You know, from the beginning of this podcast here, you know, I didn't have no idea to be able to have a, you know, uh, my own, you know, song for the show. But, I, I, you know, I trusted these two cats to be able to, um, you know, to pick a, a song uh, that would fit, you know, my vibe. And, uh, you know, I dig it. You know, I, I I trusted them and they came out with a banger. So he's also the same cats that... uh that are working with my audio, that I'm working on my hip hop album, which I mentioned that before on yep. the other episodes, in case y'all forgot. Yep. And so, you know, we, we you know, I'm going to dip into a few things. I love hip hop. You know, big, uh, you know, the, the hip hop is, uh, it saved my life too, you know, being lonely times on the road and stuff, late night and midnight, driving away from the arena, got to drive another three hours knowing you're going to get there at three in the morning. And, you know, you just kind of throw on your, you know, your, you know, your mixtapes. You know, I used to have mixtapes of hip hop back in the day, those cassette tapes. And so I would just, you know, throw that in there and just listen to just a bunch of stuff from the East Coast and to the West Coast, you know, like some Biggie or some Tupac, some LL Cool J, some Ice Cube, you know, some uh, Dr. Dre, you know, uh, Public Enemy. KRS One. Mm -hmm. I mean, I'm probably you know talking about for the new kids, and you know they, they probably don't even know who that is, you know, unless you name a few guys like Travis Scott. Now we come into the new era, and I only know that from my son Samson. So, yeah, so I'm a big you know shout out to a lot of hip hop uh, artists out there. there. There is one thing that, in case the radio stations out there that are listening to this podcast. I, I like to, you know, utilize, you know, my platform here just to kind of send a shout out to all the radio stations around the world. And uh, I just got a question for y'all. Like we we see a lot of, you know, black hip hop artists out there. We see, we hear a lot of white hip hop artists out there, you know, Mexican hip hop artists out there. But we never get to hear Polynesian hip-hop artists out there on the radio. You know, we got a lot of uh, Samoans. We got a lot of uh, Tongans. We got a lot of Fijians. I mean, I can name, you know, a few, a bunch of uh, talented hip-hop guys from New Zealand and Australia and Samoa, like, you know, Poetic. Uh, there's a guy up there in San Jose by the name of Drew Deasy. He's out that way. The, you know, the last time we heard Polynesian on mainstream, uh, mainstream radio was Booyah Tribe. And now we're talking about 30 years ago. So that's my question that I want to ask the radio stations that are out there. W what is it that, you know, because I, I know we, we got talent just like the rest of everybody. Mm -hmm. 
So it almost feels like, you know, what, what makes us different that we can't have our, our, our voices be heard, you know? So, and if you want to learn about uh, some of these cats here from the islands, just go ahead and punch out, you know, Polynesian hip hop artists and you're going to, you know, get ready because you're going to see a long list of talented, very talented female and male hip hop artists that are out there. And so all I'm asking, just give them a shot. Because damn it, when I drop my album, I'm kicking down doors, Joey. If, let, let me know if you've heard of this artist. They're from Hawaii. You ever hear of the artist Sudden Rush? Sudden Rush, yeah. Yeah, yeah. Uh, that's that's pretty much my the extent of my Polynesian uh, rap artists, them and Jay Boog. Mm. Um, uh, they had a song about the Night Marchers, which I really, really liked. Uh, I, don't, I don't know. I just, they were coming to mind. Sounds like uh, the radio world needs to smarten up. You know what I mean? Well, you know what? It's just asking for opportunities. Yes, sir. Right? Just give everybody equal opportunities. Hey, I get it. If you feel like they're not as good to be able to be played on your radio station, by all means, that's your choice. But at the end of the day is give my people a shot. Give my people a shot like you give everybody else a shot. And I guarantee you there's a whole new cult of Polynesian island people around the world, not only here in the United States. I'm talking about around the world. Right. Wow. So that's what I got to say on this show here about, you know, the music industry, the, you know, the hip hop world. Y'all keep doing what you're doing. You know, thank you for all the love on on the show. You know, I go back and I see all the comments and everything that, you know, uh, Kishi has always been a part of hip hop. And that's why, you know, we decided to call this show Rikishi Off the Top. And basically, Off the Top, that's coming to the hip hop, the whole hip hop world. And now I want to add in my whole island people, island reggae, hip hop reggae, R&B reggae. I mean, you know, there's enough of the, there's enough to eat for everybody out there. You know, so, so that's my show. You know, I want to thank everybody. Do you, Joey, thank you for uh, joining in tonight. It's always a pleasure uh, to sit back and chill with you until uh, we meet out next time. Yes, sir. Thanks for having me. As always. always remember this. It's free to be kind to one another, and it's time to smarten up. And we out. You want to bring awareness to your business? All you got to do is hit the link below, and then guess what? Rikishi Fought 2 Off the Top Podcast will be promoting you. It's time to smarten up. It's time to say things that people are scared to say. It's time to bring you on into my home so you know what time it is. In the locker room, in the hip-hop world, in the wrestling world. You might even come into my kitchen.